Number one. I currently live in a big city, but I have never forgotten my friends from my hometown. Especially my friends who hang out in a small park in the middle of the city that, for the sake of this story, I will simply call S. So, S is a small place, but most of the people that hang around there know each other. Many generations of people have passed through it. I started hanging around there about 11 or 12 years ago when I was in 9th grade, and my close friends have been there for about the same amount of time or more. Now, around 50 people hang out there, and while we may not all be extremely close friends, we get into trouble together frequently. Now, after that short summary, on with the actual story. Last summer, I was visiting my hometown for a few weeks. One day, a guy got into a fight and he got mad at his friends for not standing up for him. The entire evening, the whole place was buzzing with debate over the matter. I was sitting at a table with some of my closer friends and we were getting very sick of it very fast. We then decided we should hop into my car and just drive out of town to get away from it. So, in the car with me were my friends Alex, Stefan, Andrew, Laura, and because there was no more space inside the car, we hauled Bogdan into the trunk. We drove for about 20 miles, and Bogdan was complaining that he was getting sore inside the trunk. Realizing we were very close to a forest, we decided we'll stop there to get some fresh air, peace and quiet. The road led right through the forest and I stopped the car in a clearing right next to the road. We got out of the car and walked around for a bit. I've always loved forests and I always thought there was something special about them at night. It's quiet and serene. Stefan and Andrew were particularly close friends and they wandered around by themselves. Guys, come check this out. We heard Stefan calling us. We walked over to him and Andrew. They found what seemed to be some sort of a barrack, but it was obviously abandoned for quite some time. They tried all the doors, trying to get in, but they were locked. You fuckers know this is how all the horror movies start, right? I told them. That's exactly why we want to get in and see what's inside, Stefan replied. Myself, along with Alex, Laura and Bogdan, let them have their silly fun and walked into the forest. We walked for a while, until we could no longer hear the other two banging on the doors, trying to get them open. Suddenly, I start hearing a strange noise. You guys hear that? I ask. We all stop and listen. Yeah, like a soft whimpering, said Alex. We tried to pinpoint the exact location of where the sound was coming from, but the wind blowing through the trees made it hard. Bogdan was already shitting bricks. I'm getting the fuck out of here, he said and began walking back. It's probably not a smart idea to go alone, mate. I tell him. Fuck you, this is creepy, he tells me while continuing his walk. The three of us that remain continued on through the forest, trying to find where the sounds were coming from. They were getting louder, so we thought we were getting close. As we got closer and closer, the soft whimpering turned into sobbing, and all of a sudden, we were hearing a childlike crying very loud. We froze in place. The cries, coupled with the dark forest, made the atmosphere extremely unnerving. We decided, fuck it, and turned around and ran back towards the clearing we stopped in. After a short while, a figure comes out of the trees and bumps into me and we both fall on the ground. Laura starts crying like she was being murdered while Alex was trying to get it off off me. After we stopped struggling, we recognized the so-called horrible monster that attacked me. It was Bogdan, who was also scared shitless. What the hell is that noise? He asks. No fucking clue, man, but I'm not sticking around to find out. Alex tells him. Suddenly, Laura starts screaming bloody murder again and points behind us. We turn around and standing a few feet away from where we came, a burly man holding an axe and covered in blood was staring at us. 
All of us, manly men, start screaming like little girls and resume running towards the car. Nobody dared to look back to check if discount Jason Voorhees was following us. We ran out of the forest and in the clearing outside the barrack, Stefan and Andrew were pacing around, also seemingly frightened out of their minds. While we were in the forest, they had finally managed to break the door down. They started searching the barrack, and they also started hearing some soft whimpering, albeit from a very different source. They walked around, very cautiously prepared for the worst, and what they found was indeed the worst. As they opened the door to one of the rooms, a blood-covered woman was crawling on the floor, trying to speak. They hauled ass the fuck out of there and blocked the entrance of the barrack with whatever they could find, mere seconds after we came out of the forest. Dude, there is something really fucked up in there. Stefan screams at me when he sees me running from the forest. Fuck car now! Were the only words that came out of my mouth as I bolted to the car. I unlocked it, and while waiting for everyone to get in, I catch a glimpse of the man exiting the forest at running speed. Stefan and Andrew also see him and they jump in the backseat of the car head first. The others get in and they pack themselves like sardines and I start the engine and take off with the wheels screeching without even taking the time to close the doors. I look in the rearview mirror and the guy is just standing there next to the road, looking at us. I could very clearly see him now as there was a light on the side of the road. His axe and himself were completely drenched in blood. As we drove back, Stefan starts telling us about the woman they found, torn straight out of the grudge. I dismissed them, saying I didn't want to talk about it at that point. We continue the drive in complete and utter silence. I drop everyone else at their home and do my best to forget what we had just been through. The next day, at around 6pm, I'm sitting at my usual table in S, along with Stefan, Andrew, Bogdan and Laura. Eventually, Alex shows up, and he looks completely distraught. I know we don't want to talk about it, but you guys have to hear this. He says as he sits down at the table. That fucker that chased us last night? This morning. The cops found him hanging by the neck from a tree in the clearing we stopped in. Dead. It gets worse though. The sick fuck stabbed his wife 16 times and dumped her in the barrack letting her bleed to death. Then he took his daughter into the woods and butchered her as well. We all gasped and shook our heads at the news. We spent the rest of the evening in almost complete silence. Number 2 To give you some backstory... I am a 16, almost 17 year old female living in a small town in Canada. I have this little group of friends that are extremely close and hang out anytime we can, which was mostly every weekend. So, a few weeks ago, there was this huge party, about 45 minutes away. It was the biggest party of the year and there were going to be a lot of people there and my friends and I were very excited to go. We got some party supplies, aka drinks and a lot of pot, and I'm talking a lot. So, we get there, right as it was being busted by the cops, who apparently knew about it before it even started. By this time, we were pretty bummed out about it, and still have a lot of weed with us and are pumped to just smoke it all. So, we get back to our town, and my friend's sister drops us off near the river, as we plan to smoke it all and just have a good time. It's about 2 in the morning by now and I've walked around at that time and I felt pretty safe as our town is small and everyone knows everyone. Before we've even done anything, we were walking over to a secluded area to smoke where no one can see us. As we were walking, this red Toyota passes us and slows down near us. I took note of it as it slowed down and it was a bit creepy. About 10 minutes later, both me and my friend see him come by once again. The man in the car looked about 45 and gave me this look. To this day, I cannot describe how terrifying this man's look was. It was a sly smile, 
but his eyes screamed crazy. I looked over at my boyfriend and we just kind of glanced at each other in fear. He drove away though, so we didn't really think anything of it after that. I didn't feel the need to notify our other friends because it would just worry them. I wish the story ended here. About half an hour later, we were completely baked. We walked back up to the street and began to record our conversations, as we do to remember in the morning, which usually turns out hilarious. As we were walking, this red car turns towards us. I realized right away who it was. The car is coming up from behind us and I immediately panic and ask my friend who saw him before if it was the same guy. She agreed that it was. After he passed us, he slams on the brakes and reverses quickly. I look around for an escape plan. I see a path towards the river that cars cannot go near. I book it just as he rolls down the window, screams something at us, and then proceeds to open his car door and get out. I realized then he was a very, very big man. I am running as my friends are behind me also running. I keep looking behind us at him, and he gets back into his car and drives away quickly. We talked about calling the cops, but we were all stoned except for one of us and still had weed on us. We call her sister to come pick us up, and she says she's on her way and close. We wait for her to pick us up and are relieved when she does. As we drive away, we see the red car once again, drive past the place where we saw him last. He was circling, waiting for us to come back to the road. The next morning, we realize we caught most of it on voice recording. Sadly, you can't hear when he screams, but it's chilling to listen to. So, here's the audio. It's quite hard to hear, but at the beginning, my friend Brazil says, that's not Raven, who is her sister. Also, you can hear me in the background asking if it's the same guy as before. Then I say, that's not cool, we should walk. After I said this, the window rolls down and he gets out. And if you listen closer, you can hear the brakes squeal. Did you become so pretty, Sierra? I fucked myself. <laughs> wow, that makes yeah. sense. That's not that... right. No. All right, do you want me to go get Holly? No. No. That's... Okay. Yeah. No. Okay, can somebody get Number 3 I tell this story from my grandfather's point of view in the exact same way he told me. I served in the US Marine Corps for around 5 years or so. I got injured by a landmine, nothing serious but I still need time to recover. I'm at the end of my recovery and I can walk fine now. Now for the story. I live in the middle of nowhere in the woods, and it's always nice there. I have two dogs, and have had those dogs ever since I left my parents' home around five years ago. They were my parents' dogs originally, but it was some sort of farewell gift, and these dogs have changed my life. I have a fence in my backyard, just so the dogs can sleep inside it. I close the gate at night so that I don't fall asleep with two dogs, and then wake up with only one. It was a Friday night, so I was so tired that I decided to go to bed early at around 6.30pm. I went outside and closed the gate for the dogs, and then I went inside and curled up in my bed, and I closed my eyes. The dogs are very quiet at night, unless something is threatening them, or if I have company just show up late at night. I heard something hit the gate, and it kind of woke me up just a little bit. I closed my eyes and shrugged it off, until my dogs began to violently bark. I jolted up and looked at the clock. It was almost midnight. Please, be some sort of a stray animal, I said to myself. 
I got out of the bed and slipped on some pants and put on some slippers and walked to the back door. I opened it up and almost instantly the dogs went silent. I froze. It was very strange hearing the silence hit me so fast. I looked around and saw nothing. I turned around and went back to my room. Almost immediately after laying down, the dogs began violently barking again. By this time, I heard something else. My heart began racing because this thing was making a noise that was so much more deep and sinister than my dogs. I turned around, went to my dresser and slid the middle drawer open and grabbed my pistol and a flashlight, then moved outside very quickly. I opened the back door and the silence of the dogs hit me again. I turned in my flashlight and I called out. You get one chance to come out and show yourself or else I'm coming to find you. I'm armed. I got no response, so I slowly walked down the back deck stairs. I moved the flashlight to look at the gate and I noticed something that was different in colour from everything else. I readied my gun and I slowly walked over to the object. I picked it up and I was confused. It was a chunk of meat, fresh meat. It was still dripping blood and it was warm. My instinct of training kicked in and I cocked my weapon. With one in the chamber and my adrenaline rushing through my veins, I walked around the house twice and found nothing. And not just like no animal or man but no tracks, no trace, and no blood trail. It's almost like a chunk of an animal, hopefully it's an animal, just dropped there from the sky. I couldn't find where it came from after searching for at least 10 minutes. I then gave up and figured that it was a wolf or a bear, and went back inside. And then, I went to the kitchen sink and began washing my hands. There is a large window in front of the sink, all the lights in my house were off so that I could see outside as soon as I got in. I noticed something move outside. I froze, turned off the sink, grabbed my gun and flashlight, then charged outside. I was ready to kill this animal and finally go back to bed and sleep for at least a week. The closer I got to the figure, the more features I saw on this creature. It was human, bent over. I thought he was hurt because his skin was so pale and his spine was visible through the very thin skin on his back. Get up and put your hands on your head. I yelled with the sound of adrenaline in my voice. The man slowly began to raise up. I am a big guy, about six foot three, and I weigh at least 200 pounds. I have come across hell out of the battlefield. Now, I am alone and I am still not scared of this guy. Until he stood up. And then, I realized this wasn't a man at all. This wasn't it. It stood up and I heard its bones crack as it rose. It finally finished raising up. It had to be at least 7 foot 8. Turn around! I screamed, trying to hide the fear in my voice. It turned around and I wanted to cry. Its face was blooded and caved and its skull was showing and its arms were pale and had bits of flesh hanging off of its skin. Its hands were huge and its fingers reached down to its kneecaps and were just bone. This thing's body was pale and its ribcage was showing, like actually showing. I was done. I raised my gun and I shot it. But as soon as the gun's lights wore off on my eyes, the creature was gone. Or so I thought. I turned around and there it was. I froze and raised my gun again. I swear I saw it smile and its skull had formed into a shape I can't even explain. It rushed towards me and then threw me to the ground. As soon as I turned around it was gone. I searched the house and the yard and the freaking woods like ten times. Finally realizing that it was like six in the morning and the sun was starting to rise. Damn it. I was extremely tired and I went over to the gate and opened it. Then I realized. I finally found out where the chunk of meat came from. It made me fall to my knees. Number 4 
This happened four years ago. I was a sophomore in college. I typically avoided relationships, if they were mine or not. Mostly because of how busy college kept me, and I'm a journalism major. So, I think you get the point. Aside from that, I had healthy relationships with friends, and went out occasionally. My roommate, Piper, had this boyfriend she brought over every night and only to, yes, have sex with. It was boring and I got tired of all the loud sex and decided to move out. A month or two later, I moved in with my new roommate, Jenna. Piper and her boyfriend broke up. But it wasn't the average. It's not you, it's me. It was for a bigger reason and apparently I was involved. Piper texted me at 10pm and said the following. How fucking dare you? Must you really destroy my happiness? I texted back. What the hell are you talking about? And she proceeded with. My boyfriend said he can't be with me because he had feelings for someone else. And it was you. With an angry emoji. I was stunned, then responded with. I don't know him and you should get over it. All you two did was have sex anyway. And I left it there. When I woke up the next morning, my phone was blown up with texts. I didn't even bother checking, I just clicked on my app, and the notifications went away. For the next few weeks, weird events had been occurring. My jewellery being missing, and even a smashed photo of me and my mum on the ground one night when I got home. After that... I remember going up to Jenna and yelling at her, but she insisted that it wasn't her. The sincerity in her voice told me she wasn't lying, and that she had nothing to be mad at me for. No one else knew about the little spare key under the plant outside our door, but Jenna and I. So, someone would have to deliberately look for some sort of way to get through the door. I checked the plant, and sure enough, the key was missing. I called campus security and the next day they sent two men over to check out everything. They didn't find anything but they said they would talk to the advisor of our building on getting our locks changed. I really didn't want to go through that and now I regret not doing it but the story must continue. A day or so later someone knocked at my door and to my surprise it was Piper's ex-boyfriend. Hey. Piper has been sending me all types of threats. Can you text her to chill out? She says you two still text. I responded with, I haven't texted her in weeks. She needs to lay off. Sorry dude, I can't help you. Just call campus security or something. No, you don't get it. The threats are so bad. Can I show you? He asked. I agreed, and when he showed me, I was disgusted. This girl was so sick, and since he chose not to report it, the only word I could give him was to stay safe. That night, I was working on a paper on some writer and what he did to protect whatever, and I kept hearing footsteps in the living room. I got up to check, because it was weird if Jenna were to wake up at 3am, and all I could think was she got up to get some food from somewhere. I walked out and it was completely dark. I couldn't see anything except my lamp from my room illuminating a little bit of the couch. Gina, is that you? I waited and then heard a voice say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had a headache. I'm going to the store. That was not Jenna's voice. I made the brave decision to play along. Hold on, Jenna. Let me get you money. I won't turn on the light, okay? I said. The voice silently whispered. Okay. I walked back into my room and looked for some sort of weapon, turned off the light, and then stood in the doorframe. Come here. The light's off so it won't strain your eyes. The person started walking over towards the doorframe. The only weapon I had was a very sharp hanger that I had broken off a while back. She still came closer as I heard her footsteps nearing. I then remembered there was a light switch next to my door and I switched it on. The light flooded into my room fast and to my horror, it was Piper's ex-boyfriend. I quickly thrusted my foot at his knee and kneed him in the groin. 
He was on the floor immediately, and I yelled out Jenna's name. Then, Jenna rushed in, screaming, and I yelled at her to call the police or campus security. She quickly pulled her phone off the counter and quickly dialed someone up. I noticed in his hand was the key from under the pot. This whole time, I figured Piper was doing all this snooping around, and that Piper would be the one I would see when I switched the light on. I was so wrong. Eventually, police came and took him down to the station and took a statement from me. I called the police a few days after the incident, but they didn't tell me a word. Jenna's brother works for the police station, and she invited him over to get details because he was assigned to work on the case as well as others. He asked me a bunch of questions about what texts I received and all that, but the problem was, I didn't check them, but I did show them to him and he asked, Did Piper usually write like this? I looked, and it was nothing like how Piper's grammar was. After that, he told me everything. Apparently, Piper's ex-boyfriend wasn't the one who broke up with Piper. Piper broke up with him, and he was so mad he pushed her down and stole her phone. He apparently always had some weird infatuation with me, and long story short, the sick creep was breaking into my house, pretending to be Piper and sending threats to himself and I in order to receive my sympathy. The most disturbing thing was that there was some rope in his jacket pocket. What he planned to do with it, I don't know, but it was so weird to think about. So, after hearing all that, it was enough to make me decide to file a restraining order. He couldn't be anywhere near me in a 100 mile radius. I moved schools after that and went to a bigger city in Northern Carolina. He got put in jail for a short time, and now, four years later, I still keep in touch with Jenna. Jenna told me that when he got out of jail, he asked a lot about me to a lot of people and where I went. No one told him because it was a small town and word travels very fast. Apparently, he found a girlfriend and moved away somewhere I don't care to know about. All I know is that I hope that girlfriend is as crazy as he is, or smart enough to leave. Piper and I reconnected when it was my senior year in my college and we are still friends. It freaks me out to know that he was in the same dorm with me, and I had no clue. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I hope you enjoyed listening through that. If you did, please, slap a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to be notified of future uploads? If you have a story you want me to narrate, please send it to my email in the description box. Once again... Thanks a lot for listening.